Welcome back all the fans and followers of space fiction. Today's video is a continuation of the topic of creating artificial gravity during interplanetary flights. You can watch my previous video by clicking on the link in the description below. Last time we talked about rotating space stations and also about the possibility of creating artificial gravity without rotation. The large rotating station has very limited maneuverability. The spaceship, which provides artificial gravity only by trusting the engines, is again very demanding in terms of rocket engine design and fuel. But what is the real best solution for interplanetary travel? The answer is not that simple. First, let's look at our technical capabilities. I think we would be able to build a rotating spaceship with a stable part for engines and flight systems. Let's suppose that in the near future we could build a rocket engine capable of producing a steady thrust for a long time, capable of giving spaceship a constant acceleration of 1 meter per second squared. So in one second the spaceship would accelerate by 3.6 km per hour. Accelerating a spaceship with the same force as the force of gravitational acceleration will still not be possible for a decade. Let's now compare four possible destinations within our solar system. Flying to the Moon, to Mars, to Jupiter and to the border of the solar system to Neptune. The Moon is relatively close to Earth. If we kept speeding up half the way and slowing down half the way, we would get to the Moon in 11 hours. For such a short time, it is certainly not necessary to build a complicated spaceship with a rotating space for living. The passengers do not spend a single day on board, so the deck would rather resemble today's plane. The more seats the passengers occupy, the more efficient and profitable such a flight would be. They would feel artificial gravity only very faintly. Nevertheless, this would be not negligible and the entire cabin for passengers and crew would have to be head-oriented in the direction of flight. Mars is about half the distance between Earth and the Sun from Earth. However, the fastest journey to Mars cannot lead perpendicular to the orbits of the planets. In such a case, a slow start and a slow approach would not be possible. So let's assume that the ideal trajectory for our fast spacecraft would measure 175 million kilometers. With the same principle and the power of acceleration and deceleration, the spacecraft would reach Mars in 9.5 days. 9 to 10 day space flights were common for American space shuttles. It is the time it takes for the human body to get used to weak gravity, but it is a short time for a loss of muscle mass and bone loss. Thus, for specific missions and well-trained crew members, it would again not be necessary to build a spaceship with full Earth gravity provided by a rotating part. For paying passengers, however, this convenience would already be considered. It is a period of one and a half weeks during which the passengers will be locked in a spaceship. Everyone there must have their own space for sleeping and privacy. And the weak gravity generated only by the power of the engines could cause unnecessary injuries to common passengers. Nevertheless, a rotating spaceship would still not be a necessity in this case. The journey to Jupiter would take the spacecraft over 19 days and to Neptune up to 49 days. That's enough time for the crew to need a full-fledged artificial gravity. For such a journey the spaceship should already be equipped with a rotating habitation modules. However, there are still a few technical problems that we would have to take into account when building such a spaceship. If the spacecraft rotates and accelerates or decelerates at the same time, the habitation modules cannot be directed perpendicular to the direction of flight, but at a slight angle. Otherwise, the perception of space for the crew would be constantly tilted to one side. If the ship turned halfway to start braking, this rotating part could remain unchanged as one block. 
However, if the spaceship did not turn, but started using the engines in the front of the ship for the braking maneuver, the rotating part would have to be able to tilt according to the actual force of the engines. Another problem is that building a rotating spaceship with a non-rotating middle part is a quite an issue. The rotating joint would not only have to ensure air tightness, but would also have to be able to maintain the constant pressure caused by the rocket engines. Therefore, the best solution would be for the entire deck to be located only in the rotating part of the spaceship. Otherwise, the rotating part of the spaceship could not be directly in space, but would have to be housed in a large hermetically sealed cylinder to be isolated from the vacuum. The last problem is changing the direction of such a spaceship. This is because the rotating part acts as a flywheel, so you need to use much more power to change the direction of the rotating spaceship than to change the direction of the non-rotating spaceship. In addition, changing the axis of rotation will again put pressure on the joint of the rotating and non-rotating part. In the end, let's think about why the whole spaceship could not rotate completely? The answer is very simple. The steering of the spaceship and the precise direction of the impulses of the reaction control thrusters requires a stable orientation. Communication with the Earth also requires a stable orientation of the spaceship. Therefore, at least these systems cannot rotate. In addition, rotation creates a force that can damage or loosen a device from the surface of the spaceship over time. So this is what some designs of interplanetary spaceship might look like. If you liked it, or if you have a different opinion, please write it to me in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to share, like and subscribe if you want to see other amazing videos from the world of space fiction.